Hmm, very interesting. Uh, there's so many interesting RPGs and they're on this SNES than any other in Austin. Oh, hey, it's you again. Uh, yeah, I was watching the phone and to see all the other stuff was going on and other RPG games that I might know it. So anyways, today I'm gonna review another game that most people know and I'm gonna put my my tropical hat in this game right here. Today I'm gonna review the mightiest, most powerful and well-known Final, Final Fantasy game of all time up there with 7 and 9. Final Fantasy, well, in reality it's 6, well, in North America it's 3 and 6 is whatever. I will tell you later in the video in the review. So, for the meantime, let's do it the video my friend.
Greetings my friend and welcome back to another RPG video. Last time I did review Illusion of Gaia from Quintet in Enix, which is a great RPG and if you haven't checked out the video again, I highly recommend to pause this video and go back watch that video and then come here if you want it. So I'll leave the uh, the link down below or you can click the notification you see up by up a hair or uh, watch it. So, Today I'm going to review Final Fantasy 3 aka 6 the Japanese release. So this is based on the game that is famously known and is one of the most famous games of all time. And it's one of those legendary games that really cemented for most people. So why this game exactly? First off, this game is, a, is a, one of the most gorgeous looking games, the most amazing storytelling game. Like I mentioned in my Illusion of Gaia video, I love RPG that tell a story. Each character had a personality, persona, that's why I like RPGs, the old ones. Rather than just a new one, save the world, the same old cliche, this one has a different persona, a different personality. Now, in, in my history of RPG fanatic, or RPG enthusiasm, I did play Final Fantasy III after the first one. Yep, instead of in order, I do it in an alternate order. Start with the, the second one, which is for Japan, then the original NES, and then I jump to this one, which that's how I did play the Final Fantasy games. So yeah, so this is my third game in my series of series. So yeah, and I've been recently played this game to this. And I mentioned before you can play whatever you get in this quarantine during the cold fire. Well, since I had the time, I played this game quite a lot monthly since, and I got pretty much so far. And I really enjoy this early for most of the most part. Anyways, um, so why this game I've been reviewed since the game is it was reviewed a lot of times on eBay. So this is my own review, my own style, sincerely. Anyways, I'll tell the story how I got this game. Well, after I finished with the original Final Fantasy, which wasn't long since it took a while to finish it, then I asked a buddy of mine who used to play RPGs quite a while, well, the guy is, is from Japan. He has a Super Famicom system. I asked questions about him. What? Well, I did play the Final Fantasy V, which it was never came out in outside of Japan. But then he pulled out a game that I never knew it. It was Final Fantasy VI. When I saw the intro, I was like, in just in awe when I saw the title screen. I'm like. Like I mentioned before, the title scheme was like in awe. I didn't know how to describe it. It's simply, when I look at it, it's just, it, it's cemented on my memories and said, when I look at the title screen, and then it's the gorgeous, beautiful music composed by the legendary composer, I hope I pronounce it right, is Nobu Mat Namatsume. Sorry if I butchered. I put the name in, in, in the video so you can know it. Well, Namoto composed many, many, many Square Enix games. From the The two Rhyme Racer, the original and the two, and uh, and the original Final Fantasy. He composed all of them. All the Final Fantasy games. He was been with Square since 1995 to well up to 2004 when he left to another company. So yeah, it was confirmed by that guy. He composed so many square names in the game. When you, you can tell by the gorgeous, beautiful, freaking amazing orchestra music. I never heard that kind of music. Sure, you see the Final Fantasy 4, which is 2, but the 3 really put the orchestra sound to the end of it. Which is one of the few games that pull a lot for you. And it compete. So this is the game that Easily rivals Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is another big title RPG. This that game, can, well, this game competes against Chrono Trigger. I might be be a review of Chrono Trigger versus this game, but that will be in the future when I got 
when I rescue my frontier creature which is long gone dead or lost, I need to find it soon. So, so when I got that game, I will review both games in, in pink, which I, well, until they pay my friend. Yeah, I open up to you. So, it was composed by that guy. So the gorgeous music is amazing. Every single gorgeous music is just amazing. I wish I can talk the music for on and on, but not for another time. So yeah, this game was known for his gorgeous music. It's just amazing for the B time being. So, and this game came out in 1994. Well, in Japan it's April. And this and this one in October of 1994. As you can tell, it has no, no ESRB at all. You only see the logo of Squaresoft. And this is the new one. The old one has a more like a thin logo. This is the newer one. And they are soft because you have Square, you get confused. That's called Squaresoft. Which nowadays is Square Enix. Which is quite eventual. I'll talk about the, the developers behind this game in a bit. The producer and creator and founder of the Final Fantasy game was produced by Ironobu Sakauchi. Yep, the guy behind all the Final Fantasy games. Again, up to 2004. He joined Square in 1985 to 2004. He made, he was the fa he created some, I mentioned the really battles of World Rumble. He made that game, Rad Race the Original, and Final Fantasy. So, yeah. He was the creator of Final Fantasy. Well, I did not make Chrono Trigger or, or the Secret of Mana series. That was another developer. Well, the same developer is Square, but by another producer. So, anyway, it's not the same guy. So, he made the Final Fantasy games. The artist of the game is the mighty legendary. I recommend to watch Johnny Millennium's video of the anime, all the stuff. He mentioned the name of the guy. I'll leave the link down below. The artist, it's called, I hope I pronounce it correctly, is Josita uh, <clears throat> Magana Amado. I'll put the name. If, if I, all the names I mentioned in the in the video description or you see the letters, Jesus, it's really difficult to pronounce the Japanese names. Anyways. So, anyways. Amano makes all the beautiful artwork of, of the Final Fantasy original up to 6. By Final Fantasy 7 is another artist. So he made all the beautiful artwork of that. So he also made other artwork but for Final Fantasy. So that's why you see the artwork of his in the cover of the Japanese release. So yeah. So a bunch of the developers of Final Fantasy series went to here. The English trend well you might ask who translated the game? Tom was Tom was Lee. No, Ted was Lee. Well Ted did translate Mr. Quest, Final Fantasy Adventure 3 on the Game Boy, Secret of Mana Evermore as the as the maker, Marketing. Chrono Trigger, the last he produced was Super Mario RPG. Well also he made this one. He clarifies that he had to translate everything because, as you know, this game, guess what? It's been censorized. Well, just like Illusion of Gaia, they had to censor the usual Nintendo policy childhood. Well, they did too. Some of the enemies they had to cover because they had nudity. So yeah, they wouldn't. Some of the enemies are naked, so they had to put clothes. What I try to say is, is. Some character has nudity. When you look at the sprites, you can tell the difference. Second, they had to change the translation. Some of the sexual parts of the crystal part, all the, the parts that is not allowed in America, they had to change it. That's why he recalls that translated was a nightmare. Also, for example, some places such, such as bar was changed to cafe, and that's just holy to pearl simple and some names changes for example the main character the main protagonist Terra is Tina in Japan but in North America is Terra and the main antagonist Kalefa instead of with a K is with C so some name changes I'll put the names that do change in the description because 
and Lucian and Maya mentioned Overfair and that was overwhelmingly difficult to mention all this. So I will put the names quickly and some links of the investigation so you can, can get the differences of this game. It's quite amazing system. And as for this game, well, it's Final Fantasy, the typical RPG style. You level your characters, you level your experience. But unlike 2, which is the reason that most people prefer free is due to translation. The original one has been known to have horrible translations. This is why translations is very important because if you don't translate RPGs correctly, you're not gonna want to do it. You get stuck into a, a pretty segregated roadblock. And as a huge RPG kind of fan or an RPG fanatic enthusiasm, I wanted to know the story. But the trouble is, is the translation. That's the same problem that happened with some of the games, especially on Castlevania 2, which was the quote unquote one of the first RPGs in class. Because normally Castlevania is a platformer, but the Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, is what the experience with. That again is a good example that translation is very important. Well, the second Final Fantasy has a ton of English as a result it was difficult to find with well, this one they finally over the mistake well Final Fantasy Adventure 3 on the Game Boy did the same thing well thanks to Dead Hooling so that's why translation is important in terms in the GBA version of this game they get better so yeah this game this is the original SSNES release but it was also released on the Game Boy Advance if you haven't played the Game Boy Advance well you're in luck, you have the translator much correct with this one, more or less translated, but who knows. It was released on it was released on multiple devices. On phones, compilations, PlayStation, it was released on everywhere. But the original is always be the Super Nintendo. Always be the Super Nintendo. It was the original release for the Super Nintendo. But it was released on multiple consoles for the people who can enjoy it. And the Final Fantasy game. I'll mention the story real quick. I'm not gonna spoil it to you. I want to hear the experience for you. Yeah, I know some people might say I already played the game well, but this is for those who have it. I'll tell the story real quick. Just keep in mind. Just you and the game, okay? The story begins with Terra, which is Tina in Japan. We don't know much about information, just the woman like this. When he was born, her mother was a human, and her father was a despot. That's why she's a hybrid. She's a one of a kind, rare, half human, half spirit. Very unusual. Well, unfortunately, she was captured by the Empire, raised by the Empire, ruled by the Empire, to become the monster killing machine, led by the evil Khalifa. Yes, Khalifa. It spells K L F K A. Like that, I put the name. So, Khalifa has a plan to convert Terra into the ultimate killing machine to destruction. Well, they send it with a bunch of soldiers with a print or a color mental or something on, on her head to control her. Well, guess what happened? They found the Esper, but somehow the Esper did a connection with Terra, which is why and so you'll see that when she woke up guess what she doesn't she doesn't remember at all what's going on she forgot everything she does it wasn't until later that I finally remember who she is and why she's so powerful with the help of the the returners which was the opposite of the Imperial to destroy the Empire led by Bob Brennan Lucky Edgar well not Edgar Rivera Edgar Van Lustig the name and of course Sabine his twin brother and many many other teams I'll put the names on all of the characters that show up in the in the video to let know which they are as well the Empire ones so and the, this is Final Fantasy in a nutshell sincerely the risk is you had Terra which has she had no idea who he is who she is and how powerful she is she has to find herself recover herself and what she do she wants to help the help the, the universe, not to kill them as Khalifa and Empire they hoped. So they had to save the humanity from the greed, power, ego stroke, and pride. I mean there's only one key that this game gives you that always really put me in, in such a fate. That is the war of hope. 
in the game you see it. So now I'm gonna play this game on my good old SSNES Junior, on my childhood one, but I, I'll put a disclaimer. No CRT TV. The Panasonic TV that we use quite a bit no longer works. The screen is now aligned and I can't see it. And it, even your whack the, the the neck board doesn't look that great. It looks squish and just not that great. And I don't want people look like just staring at that, uh, that screen and and that really sucks because I want to show was with the ultimate the CRT TV. Now I had another CRT that's an LG one, but it doesn't work and I need to repair it. And yeah, I've been liking the CRT recently, and that really doesn't put the the aesthetic correctly. I could use the the Sony TV you see behind me, but two problems: it's an LCD. Second, it has lines, and and I got a comment about the what happened with that level. The screen doesn't work that right. That about it. The only way I can record the video is using the living room smart TV, which again, it's not for me. But in the end, I have to use. But fortunately, I had the RetroTink 2X, which is a upscaler to allow to upscale the the 240p resolution to a 240p because the SSNES doesn't produce 240p well sorry um, 480p so it upscales to the 240p to to 480p to make it bigger made it fit on the screen perfectly but the only bad news is summary but unfortunately I'm used to it but for those who are blurry eyes better I'll just so now or add something to so, so I'll do it just for convenience sakes instead of the aesthetic so I'll play the game for it I'm gonna play it since the beginning I know I already played the game it has a safe file in it but I'm gonna play through the beginning to show how it is I don't want to spoil it again it's you in the game necessarily well enough for the the chit chat back to the game
I hope you enjoyed this video of Final Fantasy 3 and uh, yeah great amazing game and some people praise as the best RPG game again it's an argument who is better Chrono Trigger and this game but up to the comments do I recommend this game? hell yes why not that would be criminal not to recommend this game that would be a criminal you have you must play this game if you haven't played the game you're missing out one of the best RPG games of all the assistance to outcome to this time and you ask why, where are I going to play this game if I don't have the physical copy like I have in my hands well you can play on the the virtual console on the Wii, Wii U and 3DS you can play on the SNS Classic Edition which is there you don't have to mod it it's, it's right there from the beginning from the start as the as a stock SNS Classic Edition and finally you can play it on yes finally there's a good news you can play the Nintendo SNS Online Switch service for this game. So you can play right there if you have the Nintendo Switch Online Server enabled. If you don't have the any of those, you can play on the computer with using the emulators. It's an option. You can play with PS SNS and SNS 9X. But if you had that, bet they had the Game Boy version, which it was released for that system. You can yeah, you play on the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy SP, or DS, DS Lite. Or, you can play out there or emulate it. And finally, it was also released on compilations and like the PlayStation 1, 2, and 3. You can get there. And, or using the phones, obviously, and not people don't like phones. So you can play on there if you desire. But me, I go with the original. So the original SSNES release. That's what I grew up with. And that's what I saw in my experience on this game. So yeah, this is Final Fantasy in a nutshell, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video, my friends. If you happen to like this video, give it a like. If you like my content on my channel and everything that is retro, click the subscribe button and the bell notification too. If you want to follow me on my social media, you can follow me on my Instagram, arroba, edgar.morenorivera.5 and you can follow me on Twitch, which is edgar.morenorivera. Hey, I'll leave both links and the, the numbers on the description so you can see and as well the number users so you can follow me there around. I do stream occasionally on both Instagram and Twitch so stay tuned if you happen to see, say me hi and you enjoy a little bit and hang out a little bit. Anyways guys, that's it for the moment. Thanks for watching, take care and see you next time my friend.